Oh hey, did you make it over here from seeing my uh, video on my Maker Play channel that I built that awesome Alexa Spotify CD box? So this video is really going in for those hardcore programming nerds who want to see the source code that is powering that Alexa Spotify CD box wow cool thing. If you haven't seen that yet, I'll put a link up here, here, down there. I'll make sure you have a link so that you can get over and see that thing and see how I built it, because it's pretty awesome. But again, back to the nerds that really want to get into that programming, this video is for you. I'm going to show you all of the ins and outs of the source code that is powering that bad boy. So let's jump into that. Okay, here we are in the code. If you're really a hardcore nerd, you're not using that Arduino IDE. That stuff kind of sucks. You're going to use a real tool, some real IDEs. So here I'm using Visual Studio Code to do all my development. So I really suggest if you haven't yet, you switch over to that because it's a much better tool. It takes a little bit of work to get set up. Go Google a link and find a way to get it all configured. Nice plug-in for Visual Studio Code to make it work, but it's nice. Much better. Better IntelliSense. Uh, definitely dark themes so you don't burn out your retinas. And um, just being able to uh, you know select something, hit F12, and actually go find definitions and explore the source code. Works much better. It's really what you want to be doing. Now, that being said... For my project, it's using the ESP32 as the microcontroller that I'm using because Wi-Fi is a very important piece of this project. Without the Wi-Fi, it ain't working. Another piece of this project is the NFC reader. So the whole key to the magic or the wow part of this project is I'm taking NFC tags, putting those on the back of CDs, and then the box itself has a NFC reader in it. And so when that tag comes within close proximity of that reader, I can read the data off of it. Based off that data, I know what CD it is. Off to make a call on Spotify API, tell that Echo Dot start playing it, and boom, bam, there we go. Just playing some music, it's awesome. You know, it makes the people think it's really cool who don't know what's going on. Or you get all those people that say, oh yeah, that's kind of cool, but why is it not reading the UPC label off of it? Or why are you not doing some optical recognition off of the CD cover? And I'm like, it's a freaking CD, man. Let's just, you know, have some fun here and think it's still cool with the NFC reader. And imagine what other stuff you can do with that NFC reader because, you know, you go out there and search Arduino and NFC reader. You know what every freaking project out there is? How to create a door lock with the NFC reader. Yeah, like, like that's cool. This is more freaking cool. Trust me. Okay, let's jump into this code. So I see at the top, we're going to include some, uh, all the header files I need, the important stuff here. Like I said, need some Wi-Fi. The Spotify client we're really going to dig into because that's a file that I wrote. This is the uh, code to be able to interface with that NFC reader or RFID reader. We get that all set up. So we're going to put that on pins 22 and 21. That thing actually worked really easy and well. I was actually surprised by that, but that's awesome. Somewhere I'll probably get a link to. You can see a, a diagram of how this is all set up. Or go click that other video. It'll probably have more detail. This video is focused on the code. The other video will be focused on the all the building of this device. We need to create that Spotify client. I get that set up here. Dig into more of that in a minute. So in our setup, always got to get the uh, serial stuff set up because yeah, you got to have some debugging. You got to have some output going to actually see what's going on. So like I said, get that set up. I always like to put a nice start point here. So in my uh, serial log, it's or the serial console. I always have a good spot where I know where my program has started. Connect to Wi-Fi. This is standard basic stuff that uh, you see in all the ESP32 sketches. The RFID reader uses SPI interface to uh, talk, so we get that initialized here. And now we get into more of the fun stuff. So to talk to the Spotify API, you've got to actually have an auth token as part of their security. So here I'm going to fetch that token. And it's also important in this case, I'm wanting to tell Spotify to play on an actual specific device. In this case, it's that Echo Dot that I put into that box. And so that Echo Dot ends up getting a device ID within Spotify. And I want to be able to tell Spotify that's the device I want to play on. Fun fact here is that device ID isn't a constant. It changes. I uh, kind of learned that the hard way. I started writing all this program. I hard-coded that ID. I powered off the Echo Dot. And I'm, you know, I plugged it, plugged it back in for whatever reason I needed to. Everything stopped working. It took me a little while to realize every time you power cycle the Echo Dot, it gets a new device ID. 
So I'll show you in a moment how we solve that, but it's done through this Get Devices. Basic of this program. We're going to constantly be checking that RFID reader and seeing if we got a tag close to it. As soon as we got a tag present, now we're going to jump in and say, let's read the data off that tag. So reading in that tag, I'm using the this uh, MFRC library, read the data. When we read that data, again, here's a cool little trick in Visual Studio Code. If I hit F12, look at that bad boy. Jumps you right down to where that method is. That's why you want a real IDE. So now in here, I'm going to pull some of that data. Another key part here is not all NFC tags are created equal. There's some different styles, some different formats. I'm using these stickers. These stickers have something like 142 bytes on them. This was written specifically for that format to parse that data off there. I haven't mentioned it yet. There's going to be a link down below too to the GitHub repo where all this source code is at. So you can go dig through that source code. But after we get through here and we read that data off, let's go back to where we're at. So we read the data. Next, we are going to parse that data. So to parse that data, again, F12, awesome little trick there. As you see down here, I'm going to skip the first 28 bytes of data because that's all just some header stuff for the NFC tag. The real important part for me starts after that. And what's after that is a link. It's the URI, or I think it was the URL, to that album or that piece of music that I want to play on Spotify. So these are what those links look like. So that's what this code right here is doing is going to parse off that link, change it from this URL link. And I want to convert it into this URI link, which really is just remove the domain off of it and change the uh, four slashes with colons. Pretty much what it is. So that's what this code is going to do for us. Go back up to where we're at. Where were we? We're right here. So we parse that. So now that we have our context URI, next is just to call play. So if we go to our play function, we're going to call the Spotify play function, pass that URI. It's going to start playing on Spotify if everything works. But there's a couple error conditions we got to handle. As I mentioned earlier, the first one, if we get a 404 that comes back from that API call, that tells me device ID changed. I ain't got the right device ID anymore. So the way I handle that, I make a call here, fetch that device ID to get the new one. Once I have it, I want to call play again because I want it to play. And then just for uh, shits and giggles here, I want to throw in a shuffle because if you don't realize every time you put a CD on there and you just play it in the same order, it gets freaking boring after a while. So I want to make sure that I have shuffle play on all the time. Another air conditioner we need to handle with this coming back, as opposed to the 404, it could be a 401 unauthorized. That's telling me my off token has expired. Another fun fact here, Spotify API off tokens are good for about an hour. I think about 60 minutes or so. So you can expect about every hour it's going to expire that token. But you will have a refresh token that you can use to fetch a new token from. So fetch a new token. Again, now we have a new token. Let's hit play. Let's hit shuffle again. Get this baby going. If I get back anything other than a 404 or a 401, I'm assuming everything's good and hunky-dory. So I'm just calling shuffle and we're moving on. And that's it. Music's playing, we're going. Now we get back into our loop and say, we got nothing else to do until we see a new tag show back up, which means if you pick that CD up, put a new CD back on, we're gonna repeat that cycle again. So let's get into a little bit more of the, uh, the guts and the bowels of this thing, which is really that Spotify code. So if you really wanna get detail on Spotify code, I got another video I published a few weeks back where I show in JavaScript how I explored the Spotify API so I can make sure how they all understand how they work before I then took a subset of those APIs, moved them over into the C++ code to actually run on the microcontroller. So you really want to go deep, suggest clicking on that video, link somewhere, here maybe, down there, wherever. I'll make sure you get it. But for the subset of that, let's jump in here. As I mentioned, so in our header file, we've implemented, we got our constructor, so we got to pass some data in. But really for this, I just implemented just the bare bones of the methods I needed. I mentioned, fetch a token. I want to play something. I want to shuffle. I'm not even using the next right now. I had this great idea that I was going to have a way where you pick the CD and put it back on. If it's the exact same CD, I'll just use that as a shortcut to skip to the next track. It had a few problems. I'd take it back out. That's going to be a future advanced feature I'll get to at some point. And as I mentioned, get devices. Uh, we got some private data. Here's another little fun fact. When you're coding on the ESP32, you don't got the, uh, what do I score for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you, you know, you're really bare bones here. It's not going to do a lot of the automatic fetching and validating of uh, the SSL certificates for you. You got to give it a little bit of extra uh, data to do that. So for this to work, since the Spotify APIs are using SSL or HTTPS, you have to give the ASP32 the certificate for it, for it to validate against. So this is a certificate that I downloaded off of the Spotify.com site. And it's actually the root certificate. Kind of an important piece here. So if you go out and say, hey, let's, let's, let's just take a moment and take a look at that. So if I go out here and I hit, let's say account Spotify, we'll hit this one. Of course, I'm gonna get an error, but the important thing is, is up here, see, we got a certificate. If I go in and view this certificate, and look through your path, notice how there's three certificates here. The most, the lowest one is the wildcardspotify.com. And if we look at the details of that one, here's a key part. You see when it expires? It expires on September. You know what it means? If I grab this certificate and put it in my code, you know what that means? On uh, September 2nd, or maybe I guess September 3rd in 2021, my shit stops working. So I don't want to have to hard code that one in there. So what I saw, the trick on the web was, is go all the way up to the top certificate. Let's take a view of it. Look how that bad boy is valid too. We're good out to 2031. This bad boy box is still working in 2031. I'm freaking impressed. Because it's either broken by then or I've lost interest by then. But this is a certificate I grabbed. We put that into the code. Like I said, bought itself plenty of time. Plenty of time. Okay, we just get it back out of there. Let's go talk about some code. So here we are. Constructor, pass in some data, let's save it. So what's important to us? Client ID, secret ID. Those are two pieces of data you're gonna need. You're gonna create an app on Spotify's website. They'll give you those IDs. Other video I'll link to, watch you exactly how to do that. If you're really that super nerd and you're gonna do this, go watch that video. Refresh token. You're gonna to also have to get that from the other video too, but this is important. You're gonna need that refresh token. You're gonna hard code it in here because that's what's gonna allow you to get a new token every hour when you need it. Device name. That's what you, the name of my echo dot so that when I go and call the API to get the device ID, I'm gonna to need to know what name I'm looking for in that JSON data that's returned back. And mention, we're attaching that to SSL certificate. Start here, fetch that token. This is gonna build that body of that. We're gonna do a post and we're gonna get that data back. When we get the data back, we're gonna do some parsing. I do not have a JSON parser in here. I know there's a way to do it. I know there's like that uh, Arduino JSON library. Couldn't get it to work. So I just brute forced some stuff. So again, we hit, hit F12, we get down here. You can see I wrote some, uh, eh, some functional code here. Some brute force is to find that freaking token in JSON and copy it out. I don't need to parse the whole JSON tree and turn it into objects when all I need is one freaking string out of it. This function is taking care of that for me. That's what I gotta learn. There should be a back button whenever I jump down. But that's it. Like I said, here we're getting a good. We're fetching a token. That's awesome. Now you'll notice with our play, next, and shuffle, now we're talking about getting in some code reuse. Because uh, all three of these have a very similar format. It's just a different URL. We can sell it to different verbs. So I create a call API method to encapsulate a all of the common stuff between them. But in shuffle, I'm going to call this endpoint, pass the device ID that I want to do. Next, call a different API endpoint with that device ID and play. When difference is play has a body, which for the, this is where we're gonna to have to put that context URI into the body. So we're telling Spotify, this is the music I want to play. And then the actual URL itself contains the device ID to say, this is the device I want you to play it on. And then we're going to do the call API. So if we take a look at call API, a couple key parts here, use an HTTP client. We're going to call that URL. I'm passing in this client because that's the uh, secure socket. What was that? That is the, uh, yeah, so this client, let's go back to the header file. The hell is client? Yeah, so that's where we're using a Wi-Fi client secure. That's giving us the, all the power we need to do that secure connection. Get that SSL stuff working. So now we have that. All of our API calls I mentioned, gotta be authenticated. 
we're authenticating with that authorization or that access token that we have. So we're building that. We're going to add that in our header for our, our access token. Here's another little fun fact. There is a the HTTP client I think has a bug in it because I was making some API calls because again, if you'll notice, we're doing up here, for example, shuffle, we call it put, but there's no body in it. And usually your put's going to have a body. And what happens is the body is zero. So in the HTTP client, it's not doing content length because that's an if statement. It says if body is zero, don't even add this header string, which some sites may build it home fine. Spotify don't like that. I think Spotify was returning back like a 413. I was like, what the hell is that? A little Google search, found a little something on uh, Stack Overflow that says, hey, uh, why don't you try putting content length equals zero? That gave me the clue I needed. Did some search through some code and realized content length wouldn't even be an added at all. So to fix that, I'm adding my own content length right here if it's zero. Overcome that bug. And it's generalizing this function. This allows me to do if I want to do a put, post, or get. We're going to make that call. We're going to get the results back. If the result comes back and has data, I'm going to save that payload so that I can return it back. And then we're done. Clean up. Free those resources. Uh, if we take a look at get devices, it's going to call that, use the same endpoint to call devices. The difference here is we're taking that payload back. And from that payload, we're going to do some parsing. If I go down to get devices, oh, this is a long, ugly method. This is what you call some really janky shit trying to get this to work. It took me a little while to get there. But again, devices comes back, at least in my case, I get a nice long JSON array because I've got four or five devices connected to my Spotify account. And so this is my uh, very janky way of quickly finding my device by its name and then within the curly brackets of that object of that name, find the other property, which is the device ID and return that device ID. Because I need that device ID, as I said, to make all these other calls. Uh, there we go. That covers it all. I mean, come on. That, that, that gives you a good work walkthrough of the source code. If you're really gonna use this, best thing you can do, hit that link down below, get out on GitHub, download this code, start playing around with it. Like I said, uh, something important to know though, if you're going to use this code, there is the settings.h file. That's where you're going to put all of your uh, secret stuff. That's where you're putting your Wi Fi password. That's where you're putting your Spotify client ID, secret ID, refresh token. You know, those things that you really want to keep private and not put out there in the public. So you'll notice my settings.h file does not have any of that data in it because I don't want you using my stuff. Hit up that other video if you're willing to get these details. Make sure you click over and actually see the device that this code is being used for because that's pretty cool. You know, if you appreciate like this video, give me a like. Uh, love to have some interaction, you know. You, I'm all game to help people out. So, you know, you drop a comment down below, ask some questions. I'm quick to respond to that. Uh, like I said, really get that warm and fuzzy when I get some interactions in the uh, comments down below. So that's it. So you, once you get out there and write yourself some code, you know, don't just sit here and watch videos, but do it for yourself because... Writing code is fun. I've, uh, I've not only made a career out of it, uh, I've made a hell of a hobby out of it. It's just, you know, making a whole YouTube channel out of it too. At least trying to. Channel can't grow though without you. You're important. Hit that like button, leave a comment, share it with your friends, spread the love. That's all I'm gonna say. Catch you in the next video.